So this is Wall Street Journal's exclusive news. The Hawaii CFO, who is currently detained in Canada, could possibly be released to be sent back to China earlier than expected. She even currently stuck in a legal limbo. If you ever actually remember the story, in the midst of the brewing trade war between China and the United States, Hawaii was uh, sacrificed as a scapegoat at the altar of Donald Trump's temper tantrum trade war with China. She was accused of dealing with Iran, which was placed on the blacklist due to the imposed sanctions against the theocratic nation. And the Hawaii was allegedly made several transactions despite the levied sanctions completely forbidding and banning any type of a commercial trades with Iran. However, uh, Ming Tzu, Ming Wan Tzu, was in the midst of uh, several wire and uh, banking transaction under her leadership as a financial director and officer of the China's leading global company. So this was a part of the reason why she was caught up in a legal limbo. Earlier, there had been an extradition efforts from the United States. So she actually you know, placed a multiple legal complaints against the United States. So this type of massive litigations eventually postponed the immediate extradition of her from Canada to the United States. Because of this excessive efforts from her legal representatives, Ming Wan Su somehow got stuck in a tiny city where she actually possesses a house in Canada, but she could not actually go outside this small area because it's really like the detention as her freedom has been significantly limited because of this confrontation between the United States. This also strained the diplomatic relationship between Canada and China. Immediately following from her legal saga, two Canadian men were actually kidnapped. They were actually detained in China. Technically, they were not actually kidnapped but they were actually in custody of China. But Canada also expected to see possible mitigation if Ming Wang Su would accept the deal from the United States Justice Department. Right now, the United States Justice Department wants to make a negotiation with her under one condition. If and only if she accepts her wrongdoings, then there could possibly be a deferred action, putting off all types of uh, imprisonment or detention, which it could allow her to go back to her homeland. She could be released from the current status because who has been part of the United States criminal justice, really wants to hear what she had done wrong from her mouth. The first requirement she needs to meet is that she said, I'm sorry, that was really the part of the deal, honestly. Sources the closest to U.S. Justice Department, Ming Wang Su should make the recognition of her wrongdoing. This is a very fundamental part of the close demanded by the negotiators on behalf of the U.S. Justice Department. And um, her lawyers are constantly in contact with the United States top negotiators to make sure that 
Ming Wanzhou were to be transferred to China by not actually being prosecuted, neither in Canada nor in the United States, because she could have truly be imprisoned if she would ever be extradited to the United States. That wouldn't be a disastrous consequence. So Ming Wanzhou is not just a simple regular financial director and a financial officer. Chief financial officer is the official title when she was a first prosecuted because she is a daughter of the founding father of Huawei, which is a league leading global technology company in China. So some say this was uh the United States early recognition of China's innovation. So the Donald Trump administration once wanted at that time wanted to put this China's trailblazer on the brace. So simply the very rationale behind this type of severe punishment was more to do with the clipping the wings of ever more fledging Chinese communication mogul. That was the interpretation coming from a different sector. But allegedly, Ming Wanzhou never wanted to make any recognition of her wrongdoing. Through the fox close to her reveal that she would have never really wanted to keep into this type of concessions. Those are really the argument because she simply could not recognize any type of wrongdoings made by her because her company had a little bit of a transaction that could be electronically traced. But that would never be against the law or that could not be outlawed following from the international commercial law. That was the very advocacy made by her argument. This would be very interesting because of some people like to say that so even actually this incoming administration could have a more leniency in search of uh, re repairing broken relationships with China, maybe, but the lawyers of uh, Ming Wanzhou really want, really, they are very desperate to close the deal by reaching a substantial agreement in favor of her early release. But the United States Justice Department is still sticking to at least the very recognition of the wrongdoing from China, because this is eventually the actual battle between the U battle between Washington and Beijing. Washington really wanted to put the kibosh on the expansion of the Chinese leading company, technically operated by its own government, in a broader context. And Washington is very desperate to. rule out the Chinese company from its own 5G network rollout. So that was really the emergency measures taken by the Trump administration in pursuit of intensifying the trade war. So this was really a put off. However, packing used to this chances to strain the existing relations, not just with the United States, but also with Canada. Two Canadians were still in custody, so they were they could possibly be returned if Ming Wanzhou would be sent back to China. There could be exchange of a sort of trade war prisoners. That's really the argument.
So right now, um, none of the spokeswoman or spokesman from the Canadian Foreign Ministry would have come out to confirm this content. However, there are undergoing negotiations between the legal representatives of the Hawaii CFO in Canada and the U.S. Justice Department. They're actually being dispatched to to Washington in beta to open up a negotiations. So there are ongoing negotiations, technically.